evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. A warm welcome to one and all, and especially those of you who are joining us here under the love tent. It is night number three, and we are here to worship. Are we not, Kedi? Yes, we are, indeed. Of course we are. I'm your host, Danelle Smith, alongside... Kedi Williams. And tonight will be another special night, isn't it, Kedi? Yes, it will be. Trust yes. Me. And we also want to extend a special welcome to those of our online viewers who are worshipping with us tonight. What channels are we on? Um, we're on the EJC virtual platform. Yes. Morn to be. Yes. And also Albion. Yes. So we are on three platforms streaming. And we're asking you, if you're in our virtual con congregation, to like, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channels, and most importantly, share the link for tonight's service. What's our title for tonight, Kadik? Questions that need no answers. And tonight, our evangelist, Pastor Anthony Boy, is going to take us through an exciting sermon. So you cannot afford to miss it. You can't afford to move. We, what you can afford to do is press the share button and spread the message so that others can join us. But before we continue with our program and before we invite our praise team to take us into worship, I'm going to ask, Kadi, can you open us with prayer, please? Sure. Let us turn our hearts and minds heavenward. Dear kind and most righteous Father, Lord, as we come again before your awesome presence, we just want to give you thanks, glory, honor, and praise. Lord, I ask that as we go into the program, that you will just touch our hearts in a very special way. Be with each and every one of us who are here, those who are on their way. Be with the evangelist as he delivers your word. Give us yet another special blessing. In Jesus' precious and most holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power.
as we continue worshiping, please stand with us as we sing our theme song. It's shouting time in heaven. assume an attitude of prayer. Eternal God and our Father, as we come before you tonight, truly want to say thank you for keeping us through the course of the day. Thank you for bringing us safely here one more night, dear Father. You hear the dropping of your word. I pray, dear God, that you'll bless each hand and heart that is involved in making this ten crusade a success, dear Father. I pray, mighty God, that as we look around us and recognize that the work is great and the reapers are few, that you'll send workers to your vineyard, dear Father. I pray, dear God, that as Christians, as those of us who have accepted the message and recognizing the seriousness of the time, we'll put our hands and hearts together along with our means to see this, to make this crusade experience a success for somebody who has never heard about the second coming of Jesus Christ. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit will descend upon each heart and each life tonight, dear Father, to refresh and to rekindle those of us who have heard and accepted the message, but along the way we get weary, dear Father, 
to go out and tell others that a time is coming when we'll all have to give an account for how we would have lived our life. So I pray, dear God, that you will send out the Holy Spirit unnumbered, dear Father, so lives will be transformed in this community and this spot of ground will never be the same because the Seventh-day Adventist Church would have pitched a tent here and the message would have been brought forward. I pray, dear God, for the one whom you have chosen to present the word to your people, dear Father, tonight another time. Anoint him afresh, dear Father, and may as he speaks, the hearts of those who are here will be blessed, dear God. I pray for those online to receive the blessing. Those whom are in the hearing of his voice, dear Father, also will come and see a man, not just the preacher, but the man who the preacher preached about. Lord, into your hands I commend everything concerning the, the program tonight and for the remainder of the series. In Jesus' name I pray and say thanks. Boy, God, tonight again, crusade again. Lord, I'm tired. Work was so draining. Oh, my word, I'm super tired, Lord. Wait, um, okay, Lord, I'm going to come. I'm going to faith it, and I'm going to just bring my burdens to you. All right, Lord, okay. All right, I'm not feeling so burdened anymore. Let me try this one. Wow, wow. Good evening, everyone. Are you feeling burdened? Are you feeling tired? I mean, it's midweek. Aren't you feeling tired? Okay, well, for the working class, I am tired and I am drained. But guess what? Just as though I bring my burdens to the master, tonight is indeed a very special evening. So if you missed last night, um, something wrong, but you know, not too bad. But this evening, it's Wednesday evening. And you know what time it is? Prayer what? Prayer time. So I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know what your burdens are. But I am grateful that you are here with us this evening where burdens are lifted at Calvary. So to our visiting friends, we appreciate your presence. And thank you so much for taking the time out, out of your busy schedule to be with us this evening. And to our members. Where would we be without you members? Thank you so much. Your presence means so much to us. And we here we have a very special guest. The president is here. And, you know, he's brave all the way from Kingston to St. Thomas. So welcome, Mr. President. It's a pleasure to have you. And welcome one and welcome all to the Hope of Glory Evangelistic Series. And trust me, don't move. You will get that blessing. Please stand while we sing the welcoming song. They come from the east and west. They come from the north and south. Invited to join with Jesus as guests and dwell in the Father's house. To gaze at his lovely face and clothed with his purity.
This is the hour of the night where we're going to be having our special feature, and that is our prayer tower moment. We're going to be taking the song, Shackled by a Heavy Burden, Neath a Load of Sin and Care. And we're going to ask to those of you who have a prayer request, have burdens, have issues that you would like to present to the Lord, we're going to invite you as best as you can to join us up front at the altar. Uh, behind me, you may be wondering who are those ladies. They are members of the prayer band. The retinue of the prayer band is in the prayer tent. But we have a sample, so I didn't come alone. But more than the ladies behind me is that we have a bigger help from above. What do you say? And so, can you just take that um, refrain from me? Shackled by a heavy burden. And those with their prayer burdens, those with their prayer issues, uh, please join us up front as we talk to the Lord. It is in the name of your dear son Jesus that we come before your presence at this time. We come giving you thanks and praise and honor and glory because you're a big God. You're a worthy God. You're bigger than the universe. You're bigger than the mountains. You're bigger than everything. You're bigger than our problems. You're bigger than our situations. And so tonight, Lord, we just come to lift you up as a great, big, wonderful God. As a way-making, miracle-working God. As a problem-solving God. We come tonight saying hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah to the God of Heaven and the Lord of glory. We pause in your presence to bring our problems to you, to pour at your feet because you've asked us to cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. We thank you, mighty God, that our problems, there is no problem that is too big for the Lord. Ask the prophet, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And we're glad to know that the answer is that there is no problem, no situation, no circumstances, no power, no force, no devil in hell that can stand to compete with the matchless God that we serve. And so we ask as we lift up Jesus, the king of heaven and earth, as we lift up Jesus far above all principalities and powers, as we lift up Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, that you will work in the behalf of your church this evening. We pause to make mention of our evangelist, Anthony Ball. You know him by name and by nature. And we just ask of you right now that you will put him in your process. Put him, Lord, under the influence of the Spirit of God. 
We ask that every message will be sponsored by heaven. Every message will come with the anointing of the Spirit of God. We thank you that for your covering. We thank you for your healing on him. And we ask, oh God, that you will reinforce his constitution for the next five weeks. Make him solid as a rock. Mighty God, pour out the Holy Spirit upon him and baptize him anew with power from on high. We thank you for your the, the, the co-evangelist. And last night he stepped into the pulpit and into the word of the living God. And we ask that your power will be upon him. Power upon the team. Power for the Bible instructors. Power for the prayer band. Power for the musician and the praise team. We ask mighty God for the power of heaven to rest in St. Thomas. Mighty God, we ask in a very special way that your Holy Spirit will move from the pulpit to the pew. We ask that for those who have come night after night and those of our viewers online somewhere across the length and breadth of planet earth, there is no distance with you, Holy Ghost. And so we ask in a very special way in a very special way that you will move by your spirit and just reach your people. Rescue, Lord, those who will die if they don't hear the call of a loving Savior. Rescue those who will certainly perish except they answer the thus said the Lord. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for those who have walked to the altar those who have left their seats, those who have come forward because they have issues. There are burdens that they carry, but burdens are lifted at Calvary. There's a burden bearer. There's a God who knows and a God who understands. There's a God who sits high, but he looks low and he knows the burden of our heart. So burden bearer, bear it for somebody tonight. Yoke destroyer, destroy it for somebody tonight. Faith mender, heart mender, body healer, soul cleanser. Do it tonight. Do it tonight, Jesus. Let tonight be the night when the Holy Ghost will walk from my heart to heart. Let tonight be the night when the Spirit of God will cast off restraint. Let tonight be the night when the Holy Ghost will move and knock the devil out. Father, we ask that tonight that you will draw all men to you. Draw red hills to you. Draw mighty God, Yalas to you. Draw Seaforth to you. Draw Hampton Court to you. Draw wood burn to you. Mighty God, draw your people. Draw them to the cross. And allow the name of Jesus to be glorified. We yield the rest of the time back to the moderators. But we ask our living Jesus. That as you prayed for Peter, continue to mediate for your church. Continue to besiege on behalf of the church. We ask, Lord, that you will cover your church, cover this tent. May everything that is done be sponsored by God, be sponsored by heaven. Take the glory for souls that will be saved. Take the glory for bodies that will be healed. Take the glory for financial situations that will change. Take the glory for depressions that are lifting. Take the glory for burdens that are reaching Calvary. Take the glory for the stubborn stains of sin that finally somebody is breaking free. We give you the honor tonight. We give you the glory and the praise. And we ask that you will have your own sweet way. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. Let all of God's wonderful people say, Amen. Amen.
and amen. You know, when my lecturer is ready to give a test. You know, some of us only hear a test or a quiz, we might have a certain feeling, but what I have is a love note. So if you have your white love notes, just raise them up. It shows that you're ready. And to my online audience, if you're ready, just type ready in the chat. I'm not seeing the love notes, man. I'm not. Yes, man, are we ready? Yes, yes. Online audience, are we ready? I'm waiting on you. All right. So we are ready. We are ready. And before I start, just remember, just write your full name very clear so that we can understand it. Don't put, as Mrs. Beckford said, Mr. Bless or Chupsi. You know, put your first name and your last name that is on your birth certificate. All right. And also what you're going to do, if you're a visitor, you're going to put V. And if you are a member, you're going to put the letter M. So while we're getting ourselves ready, I want to express gratitude to the individuals who would have participated in yesterday's quiz. How was it? How was it? Yes, man, it's not so difficult like testing schools. Come on, it's, it's just easy. All right, so I want to thank you so much for participating. And to my online audience, you know, um, we promised you, and I'm sure that if you check the, the chat, you will see a link. So just tap on that link, and it will send you directly to the quiz. Okay, so just tap on that link, and it will send you immediately to the quiz. So I'm waiting on you. Okay, so while we do that, um, individuals, if you have not here, if, if you don't hear quote unquote big ups, don't, don't feel any way, all right? It's for us to try again next time. So I want to announce the winners, the winners of yesterday's quiz. All right, and please bear with me. I know I love you. So, and I know that church can be, quote unquote, very forgiving, right? So if I don't pronounce your name correctly, no worry. Just correct me when I come off the stage. All right? So the winners, and I want the winners, just stand and acknowledge yourself because you are a big deal. You are a winner. Yes. And I, I, I'm sorry, my online audience, but tomorrow we'll be calling your name. Don't worry. So we have Tashana Bailey Schroeder. Please stand if you're here. You're a winner. And remember, you get extra special big up, you know. And if, if you hear the names and if they are from your district, you can say amen, hallelujah. You know, something nice. Right. So Tashana Bailey Schroeder. Carvel Lindsay. Are you here? Okay. All right. Anne-Marie. Mawat Carby, 
No man, you're a big deal man. Stand up man. Okay, I understand, I understand. But let me hear the church say amen. amen. All right, so we have Monique McGivan. Amen. We have Romaine McGivan. Amen. I love seeing family winning, right? Uh, we have Kiana Lomzen. Amen. Amen. And that's my little friend at the back. Just stand for us. Right? Amen. We have David Burke. Are you here? Amen. Amen. Listen, we don't like when persons win. So why are the church so quiet this evening? Amen. 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 All right. So we have A. Livingston. Amen. We have Sandra Graham. I'm not seeing them though. All right, so we have B. Baxter. Amen, amen, amen. Um, help me with this. Connie Lindsay, bear with me. I love you too. All right, and we have all of these were our members, but we need an extra, extra special big up for a visitor. Her name is Dadrian. Dadrian will just leave it there for now. You can just stand. Are you here? Okay, Adrian, if you're not here, if you're in the chat, just give us a wave or something. Let me hear the church for a visitor. Amen. Amen. So thank you for participating. Are we ready? We are ready for tonight's quiz. Are you ready? All right, online audience, I hope that you've seen the link. I know that you'll be seeing the link, man. All right, so listen up. I'm going to speak a bit softer. Number one. So you just label your paper correctly, number one. And you're going to put true or false. If you want to put T or F, that's okay. If you want to write it out, that's totally fine. So, John 3 verse 16 tells of the amazing provision that God has made for us. True or false. John 3 verse 16 tells of the amazing provision that God has made for us. True or false? Number two. There will be four, four categories of people on the earth when Jesus returns. True or false? And we're not going to shout out the answers, right? Right. There will be four categories of people on the earth when Jesus returns. Number three, we learned last night, and I love the quiz because it shows that we're listening when the sermon is going on. Amen? Amen. Right. So we learned last night that Gabriel will be sent to call God's people from the grave. True or false? And we're children of God. We will not tell any lie on the, on the preacher. Right. We learned last night that Gabriel will be sent to call God's people from the grave. Number four. The chain spoken of in Revelation 20 that will bind Satan is not a literal slash real chain. I hear something. Remember, you know, we're obedient children. Right? We're obedient. So I don't want to hear the answer. Just write it on the paper, the love note. The chain spoken of in Revelation 20 that will bind Satan is not a literal or real chain. True or false? The final one, the final true and false. True or false? The preacher outlined seven steps to reconciliation with God. He said, God took all the steps for us. True or false? The preacher outlined seven steps to reconciliation with God. He said God took all the steps for us. True or false? Amen. So those are the true, and fa true or false for this evening. And remember that come tomorrow so that when we announce your name, you can stand up with pride because as Christian people, we're winners, right? Yeah. Amen. So have a good evening, everyone.
Good night, family and friends. What a wonderful God we serve. Even when we are not thinking about him, even when we don't care about him, he still cares for us. A wonderful God. Um, there are some people here that made some pledges to help in assisting with the evangelistic series. And guess what? It's not good to make a promise and do not fulfill the promise. So I'm asking kindly for those persons who I guess you know, wrote up that envelope, if they could just let us get the pledges. And for those who do not as yet, I'm encouraging us all to let us help. Let us do what we can to help this evangelistic series to be successful. There's a long time king that said, there's a time for everything under the sun, and he is so correct. Now is the time to give. God is so good. He grant us, grant us his blessing that we could go forth and labor. So I believe at this time, we should be willing to give a free will offering. At this time, we are going to bow our head as we seeks God's blessing. Eternal Father, who art in heaven, we give you thanks at this moment for the spirit life that you have granted unto us. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us day after day. And as you give us the strength that we could go forth and labor, at this time, may we offer freely to your cause I ask in your mercies and your name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. What a God. He gives beauty for ashes, strength for fear. Good evening, everybody. God is good. And all the time. Wonderful. It's good to see you again. And I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Savior and soon coming King. This is the love tent. And God is doing great things out here. What do you say? I am delighted this evening to welcome to great God's people, the president of East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I speak of none other than Pastor Merrick Walker, man of God, lover of the people, an evangelist. And tonight the leader is here to show his support for what is happening here and to bring you words of greetings. Would you say a big amen as we welcome our conference president? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Good evening, everyone. The road to St. Thomas is long and rocky, and your car will all be splashed with dirt. But that is nothing to reach under the hope of glory tent and to see God's people standing shouting, singing, that it is shouting time in heaven. I love it. And so it is my joy to greet you warmly on behalf of the people of East Jamaica Conference. East Jamaica Conference has to do with all the Adventists in Kingston, St. Andrew, and uh, St. Thomas. What do you say? So I bring you warm greeting from all across East Jamaica Conference. And we are delighted to see what has been happening under the Hope of Glory tent. I want to commend our pastors, all our pastors, Say amen for them. All our team members say praise the Lord for them. All the people of St. Thomas who have demonstrated their support for the preaching of the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are living in a, a dark time. We are living in a time of violence and immorality on every side. And this tent is a symbol that it is not over. God is still on the throne. Praise God. And the message of God is going forth with power and great glory. And I am happy tonight that I am a part of that. And we must preach the word. We must tell the word. We must sing the word. We must read the the word of God. And God will be well pleased. And when he comes and he says, it is done. Praise God. All those who have been baptized under this tent and remain faithful. All those who were directed by the Bible instructor to make a decision will be in glory if we hold on to our faith. Praise God. And so it is my delight to greet you warmly tonight and to let you know that we belong to a group that is not only in East Jamaica Conference but all over the world, 21 million strong. And it is my pleasure to bring on the man of God who has been preaching and the devil will never win. He, will, he, will, he can be down but not out. Praise God. And I... With pleasure, present to you tonight our evangelist with the powerful word of God. Help me welcome after the song, Evangelist Anthony Ball.
days without guilt or pain so oft abandoned by your transgressions if such a thing as grace exists and grace was made for lives like this there are no strangers There are 
lump of clay that you remold me oh father and that you place your spirit within me and that you'll use me wonderfully tonight to your name's honor and glory in Jesus name Amen 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 Amen, amen. Good evening everybody Good evening before I go any further, let me pause just a while to say thanks. To say thanks to you who are under the 10th Cathedral for praying for me last night. You prayed for me and I felt your prayers. And just last night, as rather let me say it another way, just as it was made known last night that I was not so well, somebody called me from Florida. Because I was watching as evangelists, our co-evangelists, announced that I was not so well, evangelist Powell. Just then I received a call from Florida. And so I know that there are people online and people on sale people locally and abroad were praying for me and this morning again sir caswell one of my good friends sister marriott sister marriott if you're watching tonight i want to thank you for that prayer she called me and she left a prayer on my status and I was blessed by the prayer I'm here tonight because God is good it's not because of man's medication it's not because of anything that I have done it's because God is good now you may be wondering what was wrong with me I can't tell everything but I can tell you that I believe that it was because I was not obedient to my wife. Now, husbands, you must listen to your wives. Uh, my wife told me, take a dry shirt. And uh, uh, <laughs> I said, no, man. And as I look back, I remember that I finished preaching Sunday night and I traveled all the way back to Kingston in a wet shirt. Th that wasn't good, Sir Powell. Uh, must listen to your wife. <laughs> but God is good. God is good. God is good. And it's good to see you. It's good to see you. And by God's grace, we'll continue with the love. Now, I am very, very, very thankful for God's hands in my life. Let me tell you something. I was coming over this evening and I said to myself, now I was driving, my wife said, it is my second wife. <laughs> that vehicle that I'm driving, my wife says it's my second wife. I was driving and I wondered if it could have taken me. Now, St. Thomas, 
I must tell you that should I say it? Man, you are suffering a lot. But I know that you are suffering because you believe that better days are coming. If you didn't believe that, you would not take it. I was coming and I wondered if I would make it. And I remember I was at White Horses and the truck broke, I don't know if it broke down or what in the way and I was there for a while and I called Pastor Francis to find out if he was here and he was going to make a few other calls to say hey go ahead because it looks like I'm not going to make it but those who are outside of Kingston if you have never been to St. Thomas stop complaining I'm talking about where roads are concerned if you have never traveled on the roads of St. Thomas you don't know what bad roads are. <laughs> you don't know what bad roads are. But I believe that it's the promise that better days are just around the corner while you put up with it. Yeah. Let's pray by God's grace that not long from now you will get better roads. But one of the problems is that when you get better roads, that's when people are going <laughs> to... Let me not use... My, my mouth is not goat mouth, so let me tell you from now. But I know it's the reality. When we have good roads, we are crazy in our heads. Now, I was coming over and I, I, I saw some taxi men driving on the bad roads as if they were on the highway. And I said to myself, then, what will happen when the good roads come? All right, time is a bit against us, so let us go into tonight's message. Remember now that tomorrow night is our final night for the week under the tent. Then we'll come again on Sabbath, and we're expecting all the churches in uh, close proximity to be empty and everybody to be here are we together now we're going to have a wonderful time a catawampus time under the tent on Sabbath tomorrow night is our family night I'll tell you uh, the, the, I, I, the Lord placed on my mind a message to preach and if he does not change it then that's the one I'm going to preach and that is I want to be 16 again that's the message. I want to be 16 again. Now, if the Lord placed it on my mind, it's going to stay there. But maybe it's not the Lord who placed it on my mind. And so maybe he will tell me later, no, don't preach that one. But from, for now, that's where my mind is at. I want to be 16 again. Now, I'm going to ask the ushers, the ushers and the Bible workers to do me a favor at this time. You have some cards in your hands. I am going to ask the, the, our president to pray a special prayer tonight. Especially for our visiting friends. Are we together? Is that okay? I'm going to ask our president and the Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man does what now? And I have been working with the president now for quite a while. I have known him for a number of years. And I believe that he is a righteous man. And tonight, he's going to say a special prayer for all our visiting friends. So I'm asking the ushers and the Bible workers... To ensure that all our visiting friends receive pieces of paper. Now tell me something. Uh, or the prayer cards. Uh, Pastor Edwards, you know exactly 
what to ensure, what uh, to give to our friends who are here. Pastor Edwards, please ensure that our uh, visiting friends are served because everybody needs prayer. And prayer can change things. And prayer can move mountain. I did not know that I would be here this evening. But I'm here because of prayer. Are we together? So I'm asking again that the ushers and the Bible workers ensure that our visiting friends are served because our president is getting ready to pray for them. And at the end of the message, I'm going to invite you to take your prayer request and give them to the pastors who are here. The pastors who are here will have their containers and they will stand up here and you will place your prayer request. Not only our visiting friends, anyone else who need a special prayer tonight, you may do so, but it's not right now I'm going to ask you when I'm through, Mr. President, when I'm through. Yes, so I'm going to ask you to do that. Do that for me, please. Serve our friends and everyone else who, if you want God to do something special for you, this is a special prayer that the president will send up on your behalf at the end of this message. The message for tonight is questions that need no answer. That's the message for tonight. Now, <coughs> human beings usually ask questions as a means of what now? Obtaining information. Now, I'm hearing about myself and it's kind of, if you can turn it down, please. I'm hearing about myself. However, God, I don't mean the mic, I mean the gadget that has been played. The mic, bring back the mic to where it was. The gadget that is close to me. It, yes, maybe it's a phone or something. All right. All right. Let me go again. Human beings usually ask questions as a means of obtaining information. However, God never asks a question seeking information are we together why because god is what now give me that big word omniscient <coughs> there is nothing that god does not know god is all wise god is all knowing and we know also that God is omnipotent. is all powerful. And God is omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. So God does not ask a question. Because he is seeking information. However, we have read in the Bible. Where God, have, God asks several questions. And one would ask, if God is not seeking information, <coughs> why then would God ask a question? You see, my brothers and sisters, God's questions are usually for the benefit of the person or persons to which they are directed. What did I say now? God's questions are for the benefit of whom? And the person or the persons to whom the question is directed. This message will examine three questions God asked immediately after the fall. And so I invite you to take your Bibles. And let us go together now to Genesis. The book of Genesis as I told you before. 
I am a preacher who believes in the Bible. My messages are backed by scripture. And you will have to follow me in the word. Genesis 2 verse 9. The word of God says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow what now? Every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. <coughs> the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of not the knowledge of good and evil. So God created Adam and Eve and he placed them in the garden of Eden. And God gave them several trees. The Bible says are good for food. But then the Bible says that there is a particular tree that God placed in the midst of the garden. We go now to verse 15 of Genesis 2. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to do what now? Dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God what now? Commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden you may what now freely eat verse 17 but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die who spoke those words who spoke those words and who is God God is the creator. Are we together? He created the man, the man rather, and his wife. But I believe that this command was given before Eve was created. Are we together? So God created the man. And God knew what was best for the man. And God gave the man everything that he needed. And God said to the man, you can eat of all that I have permitted you to eat of, but there is one tree that you should not eat of. Because in the day that you do so, you shall surely die. Are those God's words? Yes, they are. So run right over now to Genesis chapter 3. And I'm going to ask Sir Junior, are you ready to read for me from verse 1? Let us go now. Genesis chapter 3. Go on. Now the serpent yes. was more subtle than any beast of the field which yes. the Lord God had made. Yes. And he said unto the woman, Yes. Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the yeah. garden? Yes. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, mm -hmm. but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, mm -hmm. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. All right, she, she, she added something, but we're not going to look at that tonight. Uh, move on. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Mm -hmm. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Yes. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Yes. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. Yes. And the tree to be desired to make one wise. Mm -hmm. She took up the fruit thereof and did eat. All right, so we stop there. So the Bible says that God commanded Adam and Eve. And when Eve stood by the tree and the serpent approached her, the serpent knew exactly what God said. Is that correct? And Eve also knew exactly what God said. Of course, she added a little something that was not in what God said but we're not going to focus on that tonight as I said before but the Bible says that after she was spoken to by the serpent and she saw that the fruit was good 
Something to be desired. God said, don't touch it. But she saw that it was something to be desired. Verse 7. And the, the Bible says. And the eyes of them both were opened. So the, in, in the last part of verse 6. The Bible says. And gave also unto her husband. Let, let me read the entire verse again. And, the, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took up the fruit thereof and did eat. And what now? Gave also to her husband with her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were what now? Open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sew fig leaves together. And made themselves aprons. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife did what now? Hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the tree of the garden. Are we together? Now here comes the question. Verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said where art thou? Verse 10 and he said I heard thy voice in the garden and was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself here comes the next question and he said who told you that you were naked? And here comes another question. Have you eaten from the tree whereof I commanded you that you should not eat of now three questions we see there was God questioning Adam and Eve because he needed information no let us look at the first question question number one <laughs> and the Lord God called Adam and said unto him where art thou? Do you think that God wanted to know Adam's position? Where Adam was hiding? No! The Bible tells us in Psalm 139 that God's eyes are everywhere. The Bible tells us that if we run from God and we take the wings of the morning. God is seeing us. God is there. The word of God tells us. That if we hide ourselves. In the earth. In the grave. God sees us. God knows where we are at. We can't run. We can't hide from God. So some fig trees. Or whatever trees. Adam and Eve were hiding behind could not hide them from God so God wasn't searching for their location however God asks where art thou why why you see my brothers and my sisters God wanted Adam and Eve to know that they were in the wrong place are we together? They were not at the place that they should have been. Before the fall, God would come down in the cool of the day to meet with Adam and Eve, to sup with Adam and Eve, to fellowship with Adam and Eve. They would look forward to their daily appointment with God. But this time, the same voice that they would run to, they were now running from. The same voice. The voice of God. The voice that brought them comfort. The voice that brought them solace. They were now running from the voice of God. 
That's what sin does, my brothers and sisters. Sin causes us to be afraid of God. Are we together? Sin causes us to be afraid of our creator, to be afraid of our maker, to be afraid of the one who made us in his image and likeness. When God created man, the word of God tells us that God formed man from the dust of the ground. And then after forming man, the word of God tells us that God did what? God blew a piece of himself into man's nostril. God made man in his image and likeness. And when God was through forming man to look like him, to behave like him, to walk like him, to talk like him, to live like him. Are you listening to me, my brothers and sisters? God then blew a piece of himself into man. Every one of us today, we are carrying, you are carrying a piece of God in you. Are we together? Every one of us is carrying a piece of God. God has placed into himself, into us rather, a piece of himself. And God is determined to get back that which he has placed in us. Are you listening to me? And so I hear people talking about the goodness of God keeps running after me. Keep running after me. Yes, the Bible tells us that the goodness of God is running after us. But God is running after us for one purpose. Because he wants to save us. Some people want it to, uh, to, to think, us to think that God is running after them because God wants to shower them with money and shower them with this and shower them with that. God's greatest desire is for us to be saved. God's desire is not necessarily for us to become millionaires. It's God's desire is not necessarily for us to have, drive big cars and live in big house and to have big food to eat. God's desire is that we be saved in his kingdom. So that's why his goodness is running after us. Are we together? How does sin work? Sin drove a wedge between God and man. How does sin work? The Bible says in James 1 and verse 14 and 15. It says, but every man is tempted. Every man is what? Tempted when he's what now? Drawn away of his own lust and what now? Enticed. Then lust conceives. And then when lust conceives, it brings forth what? Sin. And sin, when it is conceived, it brings forth death. That's what the Bible says. The wages of sin is what? Death, it does not matter what the philosopher says. says the way, or it does not matter what the philosophers say. My brothers and my sisters, the word of God tells us that the wages of sin is death, is death, is death, is death, is death. The Bible also tells us in Romans 3 and verse 23 that we all have sinned. Doesn't matter who you are. <clears throat> Whether you're a rich man or a poor man. Whether you're educated or you are uneducated. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Because of sin, you are separated from God. You were born separated from God. And the word of God tells us that sin has only one intention and that is to destroy you. The word of God tells us that Satan, the author of sin, John 10, 10 says that he is a thief and he comes only to what now? Thief to what now? 
kill and to what? Destroy. Satan is a liar. Satan is a murderer from the beginning. I have come to tell St. Thomas, it does not matter what you have heard before. I come to tell you tonight that there is an enemy that is out to destroy you. His name is Satan. He is determined. He is determined. I told you the other night. He is determined because he has lost heaven. He was cast out of heaven because of his rebellion. And now he is determined to ensure that you are destroyed also. Are you listening to me? And so Adam and Eve because of their rebellion they were separated from God Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2 says behold the Lord's hand is not short the Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear but 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 your iniquity has separated between you and God. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. We are sinners, born in sin and shaped in iniquity and destined for destruction. So God asks Adam, where are you? Tonight, there are some Adams who have left their families. Tonight, there are some Adams who are firing guns all over Seafort and Jamaica. Tonight, there are some Adams who are smoking ganja. Tonight, there are some Adams with their hands in their hands, digging out their hands. Tonight, there are some Adams who have lost their way. Tonight, I'm saying to the Adams, Adam, God is calling you. Where are you? Our prison houses are filled with Adams. Filled with Adams. Our gambling de dens are filled with Adams. Our cemeteries are filled with Adams. Our marks are filled with Adams. Because of what the devil has done. Because of what Satan has done. But I want to let you know that in spite of what the devil has done. God is calling tonight. God is calling tonight. Adam! 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 Where art thou? There are some Adams who have forgotten that they are Adams and are looking more like Eve's. Are you listening to me? There are some Adams who have forgotten that God has made them to be real men. Real men who walk like men, who talk like men, who behave like men, who dress like men, who sing like men. Adams must understand that God created them to be real men. Real men. Men who stand up for their families. Men who stand up for their children. Men who don't abuse their children. If you are tonight an abuser, God is calling Adam, where art thou? That's not where God expects you to be with a big stick over your wife's head, kicking and bruising and battering your wife. That's not where God expects you to be. God made you and God made you in his image and likeness to be like him. Are we together? And God gave you a companion like yourself. You're supposed to love her. You're supposed to caress her. You're supposed to cherish her. Am I talking to you? Dare you? Buttering and bruising and abusing the woman. When you have reached that place, you are no longer an Adam. You are Adam too. Are we together? Are we together? So God 
is saying, Adam, those men who are not taking care of their children, dropping one there and one there and one over there, you are not the Adam that God made. Am I talking to you? Those men who are not faithful to their wives. Are you listening to me? You believe in the scattershot business. You believe that you must have one girl here and one girl there in every district you go. You have a girl, I have another girl. You know, one, uh, some years ago, my uh, 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 so-called friend, I had, uh, still my friend, laughed at me and called me Tarzan. Uh, 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 you know why he called me Tarzan? Because we know this, the, the movie of Tarzan, and Tarzan has only one woman, and that's Jane. <laughs> so he called me Tarzan. Well, my brothers and my sisters, I am happy to be a Tarzan. Are we together? I have been married now for 28 years. And I'm not telling anybody that I am perfect. Are you listening to me? I'm not telling anybody that I've never made any mistake. But I'm happy that I can stand on this pulpit and declare today that no woman can say that I have ever missed my way with them. Not because I am perfect, but because I know that I am Adam. Are you listening to me? So that's, we we'll move from that, we we'll go to the second question. God said, Second question, verse 11. The Bible says, and God said, Who told you that you were naked? Now I want to let you know that God don't mince word. Whatever God says, there is something in it. Are we together? Now this wasn't just a question. This was also a statement. God was saying to Adam that somebody told you that you are naked. <laughs> and several scholars agree with me. Bible scholars agree with me. Somebody told Adam that he was naked. But that did not that person did not tell Adam that he was naked to give Adam information. That person told Adam that he was naked as a means of celebrating. Are you listening to me? <laughs> so some of you may have, you, you have read the scripture every, over and over and you have never stopped to think about it. How did Lucifer and the other demons with him behaved when Adam and Eve fell. You believe that it was just a quiet thing? And they walk away and say, no. It was a jubilee in the kingdom of darkness. Are you listening to me? In Jamaica, we would say that they did not jump on. It was a bang around sister in the kingdom of darkness. I can tell you that if there were ever a time that angels cried, this was the time. If there were ever a time that God and angels cried, this was the time. There was crying and tears and sorrow in heaven. Because God knew that the entire universe will never be the same again. The day Adam and Eve sinned changed the entire universe forever. Are you listening to me? But Satan was rejoicing. Satan and his imps were celebrating. Why were they celebrating? They were celebrating because they would have won one of the greatest battles ever. You don't believe me? This is a battle that has been fought now for over 6,000 years. Are you listening to me? 
This is the battle that caused God to send his only begotten son to earth. This is the battle that caused Jesus to die on Calvary's cross. This is the greatest battle. And Satan won a victory there. And it was jubilation in hell. And Satan would have looked at Adam and Eve. And Satan would have said to them, You belong to me now. <laughs> yeah. You belong to me now. You are no different than I am. You're a sinner. God cast us out because we sin. You are like us now. You belong to us. And planet earth that God gave you to have dominion over belong to us also. Satan would have looked at Adam and Eve and said, Yes, like us, you are naked. 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 Nakedness is one of the characteristics of the kingdom of darkness. And if you want to know, if you want to know if we are close to the end of or close to the coming of Jesus, look at what is happening across the world. Nakedness is one of the characteristics of sin. The kingdom of darkness. Are you listening to me? And the kind of nakedness that we see almost everywhere on planet earth is a sign that the kingdom of darkness has engrossed the entire world. So I want to, before I move on, I want to appeal to God's people. I want to appeal to the people of God. Nakedness should not be a part of you. Are we together? When God made you, he made you and he clothed you in his righteousness. When man sinned, one of the first things that God did what to put on clothes by him. Are we together? So I don't know how it is fashionable now that I see people coming to church and people going everywhere and Christians sometimes going places half naked. Half naked. And think that because the world is doing it, then we must do it too. Because if we are not doing it, we are looking old-fashioned and people are going to hear me. The word of God tells us that we are chosen. We are peculiar. We are different. Are you listening to me? So the people of God must ensure that before you leave your house in the day, you are properly attired are we together? You are properly attired. What you have, it doesn't matter how good it look or however it look, it is not for you and for the entire public. Am I talking to you? Cover up. Cover up. Because nakedness is not a part of the kingdom of God. Now I have pastored, I passed, I have pastored a couple of pastoral districts. And one of the things that I always do before leaving this my pastoral districts is to establish a dress code. Dress code. I, I, I said, listen, brethren, I, I, I can't stop you from coming or you want to come. Because the church is like this and we try to encourage you to do the right thing. But you see, whenever you're going to come up here to praise God. So whilst I can't stop you 
from coming through the doors looking a certain way when you come on the pulpit are the elders they knew that before anyone go to minister they must dress right are we together now I know that people are different wherever we go and standards are different but there are some basic things man cover up man there, there are some basic things I'm not telling you I, I, I'm not going down it, but, but, but make sure that when you stand up to glorify God Satan is not being glorified are we together are we together ensure that when you stand up to glorify God Satan is not getting the praise. That's all I will say about that now. Then the next question God asks. Number three question. Have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded you you should not eat? That's question number three. Have you, have you noticed in chapter two where God says that I command you not to eat of this tree. Have you noticed? And have you, are you noticing now the question that God is asking? With this question, my brothers and sisters, God established unequivocally that sin is a transgression of the law of God. So the Bible says God commanded, God commanded them not to eat of the tree that is of the knowledge of what now? Good and evil. That was a command. Are we together? So when they sin, what did they do? When Adam and Eve ate up the fruit. Here's what 1 John 3 and verse 4 says. 1 John 3 and verse 4 says, Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law for sin is what now transgression of the law sin is what breaking the law there are some persons who are telling us who want us to believe that the law is not applicable to my time or your time well, my brothers and sisters, if the law is not applicable to our time, then there is no sin. Are we together? Because God, my brothers and sisters, God means every word that comes out of his mouth. Are we together? And I want to let you know that when God spoke, God wasn't using ganja. When God spoke, God wasn't under some liquor. When God spoke, God wasn't high. My God says what he means and means what he says. Those three questions God asked Adam and Eve after they fell. If I had time, I would show you something else, but time won't permit me to go there. But of all the reasons why God asked the questions, the three questions, the main reason is because of the provision of salvation. Are we together? Because of what now? The provision of salvation. The questions that God asked were designed to awaken in Adam's consciousness the magnitude of his action. And its consequences. And hopefully God was hoping that Adam would respond. And Adam would see exactly 
what he did and realize that what he has done is no ordinary thing. My brothers and sisters, sin is no ordinary thing. We hug up sin and we play with sin and we dance with sin and we celebrate sin. That's what the world is doing now. <laughs> I don't know if you know this song that was done by one man they call Ras Carby. Some years ago, he did a song. I remember it because that was so vivid to me. We were talking about it recently. He did a song about the oppression that the Rastafarians go through back in his days. And he says that when he would go to seek employment, he would not be employed because they say, then a one old nigger, no Rastafari. And did you know that that song was banned? That song could not be played on air on the radio stations. I think those two radio stations back then. But today, Sir Powell, listen to the song that are being played. <laughs> Listen to the songs that are being played on radio. It's just in recent days I heard them say it's too much now. We're going to ban some of them. Huh? Listen to the songs that are being played. Man talking about how I was traveling. Some years ago I was traveling on a, a public transportation. And I heard a singer. I don't know if I can call it a song. Where a so-called DJ. He was saying that I have a little something. And I go and bus it on Sunday, bus it on Tuesday, take a rest on Wednesday, bus it on Thursday, bus it on Friday, bus it on Saturday. I must have a funeral by Sunday. You laugh. And everybody on the bus was. And I couldn't take it. I just couldn't take it. And I said, driver, do, do, turn it down now. And everybody look at me as if I were a stranger or an alien from outer space. Are we together? Now hear the thing that I've been playing. Hear the thing that our young people have plugged into their ears every day. About their guns, about how many marrows they blow out, about how many people they kill, about how many persons they trample upon, about how many destruction they are involved in, about how many duppies they are making. These are the things that our people are feeding on. Sin, my brothers and sisters, has led us now down into a messy place. But God called Adam. And God, my brothers and sisters, spoke to Adam in such a way to provoke in him repentance. Are we together? Second Corinthians 7 verse 10 says, For godly sorrows lead to repentance. Somebody here tonight. God is speaking to your heart. In a specific way. He knows you. He knows where you have been. He knows what you have done. He knows the plans. That the devil has for you. He knows that the devil means you no he knows. He knows how wrapped up and how entangled you are in sin. He knows how addicted you are. He knows how hopeless you feel. He knows. But like Adam, he's calling. Patricia, where art thou? Pamela, where art thou? Angela, 
Where art thou? Paul, where art thou? Peter, where art thou? Derek, where art thou? God is calling you tonight. Because he knows that the only way of escape is what he alone has provided. He knows that Adam and Eve could not escape destruction without him stepping in. Are you listening to me tonight? And so God called Adam and Eve. I want for you to know something as I seek to wrap this message up. That when there is something about sin that you need to know. Sin can only change man. Sin can't change God. Can I say it again? Write it down somewhere. What did I say? Sin can only change man. Sin cannot change God. Why? Because God is the same today or yesterday, today and forever. Are we together? So when Adam and Eve sinned, God loved them just as much as if they had not sinned. Are we together? And God says in Jeremiah 31, the Lord, Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, The Lord has appeared of old time, saying, Yea, I have what? I have loved you. With an everlasting love and with loving kindness, I am drawing you. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter what you think about God. It doesn't matter what you have heard about God. It doesn't matter if you love God or you want to respond to God. You can't stop God from loving you. You could have tell him, go ahead. You could have tell him, shut to me back, but not chat to me front. You could have malice him as much as you want to malice him. He still loves you. Because that's his character. And when the, when, the, when, the, when the Bible says that his goodness keep running after me. God is running after you to bring, him, bring you back to himself. Whenever you hear that song again, remember that God's goodness don't want to be running after you all the time. God wants you to stop. So his goodness and mercy can catch up on you. Are you listening to me? God's goodness and mercy running after you. And you just keep running, 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 running. It will run after you. But if you not stop, it won't catch up with you. Are we together? That's why God called Adam and Eve. They had to stop, stand still, so they could see the goodness of God. God loved them. God wanted to save them. But God would not force his goodness, his mercy, and his grace on them. And the questions were made to open their minds. That were asked, rather, to open their minds to the magnitude of what took place when they fell and the fact that there is a way of escape. A way of escape. And I wrap up by telling you, my brothers and sisters, that whilst Satan, 
Pastor Junior is gone. While Satan was there celebrating, God himself held the first evangelistic campaign. God, who were there? God's angels were there. Adam and Eve were there. Satan's and his demons were there. They were there. <laughs> they were there. I need two young people that's way wrap this up. I need three young persons to copy. One, one lady, one young lady, and two young men. Quickly, quickly. Quickly, quickly. I should wrap this up. I should have, yes. As we wrap this up, I should have prepared you. I didn't prepare you. All right, we need another young man. Another young man. All right, and for those, there are some individuals who say, Don't have no skit on the stage. This is not a skit. All right, we need another young man. We need another, wait, wait, the young men are shy. Adam! <laughs> Pastor, park a man. Young pastor, come on. And so, when Adam and Eve were dejected and despondent, and Satan was having a ball, saying that they belong to me forever, the Bible says that God held a crusade, and God stood up and he declared, he says, Satan, you are celebrating now. But before you, before this world was created, I made a provision for this day. Before the world was created, I prepared to send my only begotten son to die. To provide a way of escape for my people. You are celebrating, but I have provided an enmity. You want to read it for me, Sir Powell? Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. I, I want it to be read for those online so they can hear it. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. I want you to hear it. What does it say there? Genesis 3 and verse 15. This, these are God's words. The mic is not working. Yeah. And I will put enmity. God said between what? And I will put enmity, enmity. Yes. Between thee and the woman. Between thee and the woman. woman. And between thy seed and her seed. All right. So the Bible says, God says, I am going to put enmity. You, know, you may have read it before and don't know exactly what was God saying. What was God saying there? Now, pastor, tonight you are Satan, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just for tonight. And sister Smith, tonight you are the woman, as you are. Right? All right. Be careful now. But just follow my instruction as best as you can. Now, the Bible says that because of sin, the woman who represent God's people were, was so attracted to Satan. When she looked at him as ugly as he is, she said, wow, what a handsome creature. When she looked at him as terrible as he looked, she said, wow, what an handsome creature. And then he dangles all the wonderful things at her and allure her and say, come. And she said, he said, come. And she can't, say, come the man. Say, come. <laughs> and she can't resist the temptation. And she come and go like you are going to. She can't resist the temptation. And he said, come, come into my arms. Come into my arms. And he was, they were hugging up and dancing all their way down to hell. 
and Satan was rejoice them I rejoice dancing all the way down to hell don't go any further yet but God says Satan not so fast I'm gonna provide an enmity tonight you are Jesus and you're gonna go between them and you're gonna pull them apart 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 and she is away from him but he has some other tricks up his sleeve and he's gonna call her again call her again call her again call her again and she's coming and he's gonna go between and he's gonna pull them apart again but satan doesn't give up like that satan is still calling call her call and she's still going but god never gives up jesus never gives up are we together are we together when the time came for jesus to make the ultimate sacrifice he stretched his hand out and covered his cross and he made the ultimate sacrifice to keep the woman and the devil apart tonight the enmity is available tonight that enmity is Jesus tonight the provision has been made tonight your salvation has been paid for tonight 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 there is victory in Jesus tonight if you want to have the victory that Jesus provides just stand where you are just stand where you are. You may go now. Thank you very much. Just stand where you are. We're going to sing. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The path of sin too long I have trod now I'm coming home. I invite the president to come. I invite all the pastors along with the co-evangelist to get your container and to stand right up here. Right up here. We're going to say a special prayer of deliverance tonight. Pastors and just, just just stand right up here with those offering containers. I'm gonna ask Pastor Francis, please join us up here too. I'm gonna ask my brothers and sisters for those who need here, here the containers are the containers are in front. Now I'm coming home. Everybody who needs deliverance tonight, from whatever the situation is, this is a special deliverance prayer. Just come up to the front and place your prayer request. Whether it's a card or a paper, come up front and place your prayer request in the container. Come up front. Come up front, my brothers and sisters. Come up front. Come. 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 Place your prayer request. What is it you need deliverance from? What is it that the devil has been fighting you with? What is it you want God to deliver you from? I'm not seeing any movement on this side. Come, my brothers and my sisters. From this side, take your prayer request. Ensure you fill them up properly. Ensure you fill them up properly. If you have not yet received any and you need those prayer requests, believe me, my brothers and sisters, somebody's gonna be delivered tonight. Somebody. Well, you got to move by faith, you gotta make that first step. Take the prayer request card. Walk with somebody. 
Walk with the usher. Walk with somebody. Come, children, come. Come, come. Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming home. Come. Come and take those prayer requests. Come, come. Come, write your name. Fill out what is asked for on those prayer cards. Fill out what is asked for on those cards. And take those cards and place them in the container. From wherever you are, come. From wherever you are, come. Open wide my arms of love. This is a special prayer of deliverance. You are struggling. Fornication, adultery. You want deliverance from generational curses. Come. You want deliverance from things you don't understand. You want deliverance from a sickness. You want deliverance from a disease. From outside the tent, from wherever you are. You are next door. Come. 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 The voice of God is calling. Fill out those cards as is asked for. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Come. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Live thy word. Oh, Lord, I'm coming. Sonny Ball repeatedly he can rest oh sing the song coming on oh we are coming on one more one last time coming oh come parents come with your children come with your children don't leave them behind come with your friends Come with even your enemies. Come. God can deliver. Open wide thine arms of love. Now I'm coming. Tonight, Lord, we have come from far and near Jesus. to be blessed. Oh, hallelujah. Those online have stayed with us yes. to be blessed. Yes. Oh, God, we magnify your name because of what you have done tonight. Yes, Lord. You have healed our evangelists and you have spoken clearly and powerfully through his instruments. You have spoken words 
of life. There comes a time when these words, we will hear them no longer. Oh Lord, during the pandemic, we could not have a tent, and so we could not hear the proclamation of your word in this context. So we praise you for this privilege that you have given us and you have kept us alive Amen. to hear Amen. with our own ears the powerful, transforming word of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the response tonight. Your children have written their names. Struggling with sin on every hand. Struggling with many challenges in the land. Struggling with immorality and violence all around us. And even challenges toward our existence. Oh Lord, we come before you tonight. You are the big God. You spoke and it was done. You commanded and it came forth. Lord, tonight we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, for deliverance. Yes, Lord. Deliverance of that young man. Deliverance of that lady who is struggling. Deliverance tonight. Yes, freedom from the penalty and freedom from the power of sin right now can be experienced. Only if we come to you with boldness, with penitence, in prayer. So tonight, Lord, the person who is doubtful that you can remove that sin, oh Lord, you are able because you died on the cross and your blood is enough to remove our sins, but we must come to you in repentance. So tonight, Father, we pre present before you every name in those buckets. You know every emotion. You know every situation. You know the sinfulness of this nation. Oh Lord, tonight, we praise you for this series whereby your word is proclaimed in song, in the spoken word. In the reading of your word, we thank you, Jesus, for what you have done tonight. And as your children place those names in the receptacles, and as those online just write that P, that means pray for me. Oh God, dispatch your angels, I pray. Yes, Lord. Deliver the person who is sick, oh Father. Deliver the person who is living a life that is not in tandem with your will. Deliver those, Lord, who are seeking salvation. Yes. Tonight, Father. Tonight, God. Tonight, Holy Spirit. Tonight, bring deliverance under this tent. And may we, even though we are delayed a little, may we leave here wrapped up in Jesus. Believing, like John proclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Tonight, O Lamb of God, you are here. And all those names that are written are covered by you. Thank you, Jesus. Cover us, Jesus. Deliver us, Jesus. And help that as the word is preached from night to night, we will keep on coming. We will keep on logging on. We will keep on praying. Oh, Father, we want to be in your kingdom. Hallelujah. As we leave this place tonight, may your spirit Surely bring conviction and conversion. And may your holy angels take us safely to our destination with that contemplation that this is the solution to Jamaica's crisis. 
to continue to watch over us. Oh, Father, bless the singers. Bless those in communication. Bless your man servant. Bless the co-evangelists. Bless the ushers. Bless the people who have traveled here tonight and those online. And may we remember the words spoken tonight. And it's online. May we go over these words and realize again that the sky is the limit and it doesn't matter the sins that we have committed and the, the, the ways we have been messed up over the years. We can turn around. We can turn around. We can be changed. Not by might of self, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord will leave everything into your hands. And we look forward for another powerful message and inspirational singing tomorrow night. Keep us safe. And may the devil never be able to touch us. Be with the buses and the transportations, O oh Lord. And when the final proclamation is made, may we be on the Lord's side. Because there's no other name given on earth whereby we can be saved but the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing. And it is in his name we pray and we believe and we wait on your glorious appearing. This is our prayer in that wonderful name. The saving name of Jesus. Let the people say, Amen. God, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. See you tomorrow evening. What a word. What a message from the man of God. Can you? Yes. And what was your highlight from today's lesson? Well, God is in fact a good God. What he has done for us is, is unimaginable. Can you imagine an omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God? He's the only one who can ask questions that need no answers. And all answers come from God. I mean, we see where sin has made us step away from God, but he sent his son to die for us. What imaginable love. And we could ask for no more. Amen. No greater love has any man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. And that, brethren and friends, and our online viewers, is the reason Jesus came. Remember, the purpose for this crusade is to bring others to meet our Lord and Savior. And it is always Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so we encourage you, as always, to like, comment, subscribe, and share this link. It is on our online platforms, so you can always re-watch the sermon. And we thank you to our congregation who joined us today. And we invite you out tomorrow night yes. as we continue another night for the Hope of Glory evangelistic series. Thank you. And we will now dismiss to our theme song. Sinner once lost is found It's shining time in heaven Salvation has been brought down No one of the angels rejoices
loosen up My sins have been covered by the crimson flow And now I'm feeling fine I'm walking on the highway with my Lord My name is written down in the courts above It's shouting time in heaven Oh yes, it's shouting time No one's lost is found in shouting time in heaven. Salvation has been brought down. No one of the angels rejoices to know my sins have been covered by the crimson flow, and now I'm feeling fine. I'm walking on the highway with my Lord. My name is written down in the courts above. It's shouting time in heaven. Oh yes, it's shouting time. It's shouting time in heaven, a sinner once lost is found. It's shouting time in heaven, salvation has been brought down. No one of the angels rejoice to know my sins have been covered by the crimson flow, and now I'm feeling fine. I'm walking on the highway with my Lord, my name is written down in the courts above. It's shouting time in heaven. Oh yes, it's shouting time. No one of the angels rejoices to know my sins have been covered by the crimson flow, and now I'm feeling fine. I'm walking on the highway with my Lord, my name is written down in the courts above. It's shouting time in heaven. Oh yes, it's shouting time. It's shouting time in heaven. Oh yes, it's shouting time.